All right, what's going on, guys? B Stars Chapter 181 The Oil Floating Leopard. Let's get right into it. All right, so you remember in the previous chapter when Lagoshi was going against the Anaragumi and Melon just decided to step in and was going to take down the Anaragumi boss? Well, it turns out that we're going to go a little backwards in time in this manga chapter and revisit the fights between the Shishigumi and the Madaragumi, which is absolutely fantastic news. I was a little bit disappointed that we wouldn't get to see that battle, so I'm really glad that we kind of get to fill in that gap before we have that ultimate battle between Lagoshi and Melon. Now it looks like the younger, more vibrant Shishigumi members are going to take on the Madaragumi. And uh, Melon's just going to kind of hang on the sidelines for the time being. He's not going to participate in the battle, at least for now. And uh, he looks a little bit um, uneasy right now. He doesn't look like he's in his right state of mind. And as the battle commences between the Shishigumi and the Anaragumi, Melon begins to have these flashbacks about his mother once again. Now, I gotta say, at the outset, this is a very heartbreaking and visceral chapter. I mean, this stirred up a lot of weird feelings inside of me, and it really humanized Melon in a lot of ways that I didn't feel like could be accomplished. I mean, thus far, Melon's sort of been that Joker-esque character. I told you not to speak! Just kind of a crazy lunatic who's just kind of stirring the pot of life into utter chaos and will murder anyone for his own pleasure. And, um, you know, like the Joker, we don't really know much about his past. Now, that kind of changed with the most recent Joker movie with Joaquin Phoenix, where, you know, you kind of discovered who he really was and what kind of led up to that ultimate decision. And uh, if you've ever read the comic The Killing Joke, you kind of understand that as well. But in a lot of iterations of the Joker, it's just you're kind of presented with this character. He's insane. He's killing everyone. And he's making jokes while he's doing it and uh, you know he's just having a good old time and that's kind of how Melon was presented so it was like you didn't really feel for him as a person uh, or as an animal um, <laughs> but this chapter really brought in the reins a bit and uh, it really opened up his character and um, showed a different side of him that was very much welcomed now, as we come to know, it turns out that the leopard spots um, on their fur can move in the direction of their intentions. For example, they have in the manga, like if there's an apple on the table, their like, spots will move in the direction of the hand that's going to go grab the apple. Now, of course, leopard spots do not actually move in real life. <laughs> especially as quickly as they portray it in the manga. This is another instance of Paru Itagaki sort of stretching the limits of animal capability, you know, just to make things a little more exciting. For example, Gosha, who is a Komodo dragon, his venom is not as toxic or as powerful as they make you believe. Like, you know, when Yafia and him were standing on the wall and uh, it, it just made this huge divot and then he's like standing there and he's asking Yafia to pull him up or there was even like uh in a previous chapter where him and Yafia were having like a dinner together and I think he got like really nervous about Lagoshi's safety and like a little bit of his venom went through the table and like through like four or five floors of the building all the way down below the street level that doesn't happen um so again stretching the limitations making things a little bit more exciting it is a manga you can't expect everything to be exactly like real life so take it for what it is so the battle goes on it looks like because of the lion's keen senses they're able to detect these very quick changes in the spots of the leopards and uh by doing so they can predict the movement of the leopard before he does it kind of similar to like telegraphing and boxing you know you kind of look at the shoulder movements and the way they're positioning their body to kind of predict what's going to happen next you know so very interesting in a way but but as they tie up the leopards of the Madaragumi, this is proliferating the feelings and the memories that Melon had back when he was a child. And uh, it's really causing him a bit of distress. And um, we see a scenario in which Melon is in the bathroom with his mother and um, his mother wants to take a bath with him. Now, 
at a certain age, I'm sure we've all been there, you know, where, you know, you're a baby or a toddler and you take a bath with your mom or dad. Probably most of us have forgotten about that by now, you know, because, you know, usually by the time you're four or five, you start having memories that you can remember in adulthood. And usually by that time, you know, it's usually you don't do that anymore. You start taking baths by yourself. But Melon looks like he's a bit older here. If I had to guess, I mean, man, he looks like eight, nine, maybe ten. So it is a bit odd. Um, why his mother is doing this, I'm not really sure. I mean, we know that Melon's mother probably killed Melon's father. In previous manga chapters, that's what it seemed like it was alluding to. And it doesn't seem like she's dating, or at least to our knowledge, she's not dating. So, you know, maybe she's in need of a man. And, you know, as sick as it sounds, I mean, this stuff does happen in the real world. I mean, it's disgusting. It's not something anyone should abdicate for. But that's the reality. Reality can be very disturbing in a lot of ways. And uh, it can be really emotionally scarring for the children that are involved. So you could definitely see the inner turmoil that's affecting Melon right now. And there's even sort of a um, symbolic moment. A and this is really clever on Paru Itagaki's part, where Melon's mother touches uh, Melon's antler. And um, she grabs it in a way that I think it may be symbolic of like an adult grabbing, you know, a child's private parts. And, um, and obviously, you know, it's probably a little too risque to, um, you know, actually show her grabbing his actual private parts. But the fact that she's grabbing the antler kind of makes you think that's what she's actually implying. We kind of know from like season one of the anime how there were notions of xenophobia and um, aversive racism. And because they're animals, it's easy to sort of present those types topics without it being very offensive whereas if I think it was humans and you know let's say you had situations where you know like Mexicans or black people or Asian people were being discriminated against it might be hard for some audiences to actually watch so I think that's the beauty of Beastars is because it's animals you can sort of get away with a lot of stuff and you can present it in ways where you know none of us really identify as animals Animals. We're all humans, although <laughs> maybe I assume too much. Uh, you know, I shouldn't be too presumptuous there. But anyway, you know, I, I, I think this is a really beautiful manga chapter here. And I'm really glad that we got back to these sort of emotional, solemn, real world elements. You know, we're getting away from the tournament, if you will. And we're sort of getting back to what the original story was about. Dealing with these difficult issues that are hard to talk about. And the manga ends with um, Melon taking off his mother's bra and, you know, she seems to be in a state of ecstasy right here. And, um, you know, you could just see how this is scarring Melon and um, imprinting very bad memories and very bad thoughts in his mind. And um, the reason that he has to kill the leopard of the Maduragumi by the end is that he sort of attributes all of his hate for his mother onto the Maduragumi. Gumi. So he's sort of trying to erase that part of his past and avenge it in a way um, now that he has the power and he has the will to do something about it. And then the chapter ends with uh, Melon facing off against uh, Lagoshi. And uh, again, Melon gets back into his sadistic uh, licking his fingers, looking for uh, someone to kill phase. And uh, goddamn, what a nice chapter. You know, the past few chapters, I've absolutely loved it. I mean, even though it's been a drastic change in tone, you know, it's been a lot more Looney Tunes-esque comedy, you know, I still enjoyed it greatly. But I'm really glad that we transitioned back to the original tone of the series. And um, god, Melon's really turning into a complex character character and um you know it will be interesting to see how things resolve in this tournament if melon sort of has a breakthrough that killing others is not really the path that's going to lead him towards happiness you know i feel like maybe he'll sort of come to that realization that look even though my childhood wasn't the best killing others is not really going to do much for me in fact, it might make more problems and it might make me feel more empty. So, wow, really interesting chapter, guys. 
understand the review went a little longer this week, but I, I just had a lot to say about this chapter. It just, uh, it, it really stirred me in all the right ways. Fantastic stuff, guys. Thanks for listening, and uh, I'll catch you when Chapter 182 comes out. Catch you on the flip side.